Australia, a vast continent. Within it lives a giant freshwater fish, the likes of which are found nowhere else in the world. It survived millions of years. Can it survive man? cod is a legendary Aussie fish. Growing to over 100 kilos, it's one of the largest wholly freshwater fish in the world, and the largest freshwater fish that actively chases lures. Yep, yep, big cod. Fossil records show that the Murray cod evolved from their marine ancestors, the groper, some 60 million years ago. They're an ecologist marvel he wants you, it made it take, it, it swallow your hand. A sports fisher's dream. A special fish. The bulk of these mighty fish fuels their incredible speed off the mark. They are short distance sprinters with a turn of speed that would make a tuna blush. And they cap this off with an almighty mouth that can crush prey in a violent instant. Oh, he's got it, he bit it, he bit it. Murray Cod live in a harsh country known for its cycles of droughts and flooding rains. They're remarkable in how resilient and adaptable they are, even by an Australian ecologist's standards. They're found in a wide range of habitats, from the widest, slowest reaches of the Lower Murray to small, crystal clear rocky streams high up on the Great Dividing Range. Marty, these incredible fish, uh, how long have they been around, mate? Uh, millions of years, Rob, millions of years. Um, common ancestors uh, in the marine sort of stage of their life. Yeah. Um, and then about 60, 65 million years, they sort of ventured inland. Uh, so they've been around a, a very long time. They would have gone through, you know, many, many droughts. Yeah. Um, blackwater events, certainly. Yeah. Um, fire would have been a, a big part of, um, a big part of something they would have had to, to handle and, uh, and evolve through, so. You can see how aggressive they are, mate. When they're in the mood, they really just, they want to hit things and that's what's led to their overfishing. Yeah, well, they, they're certainly the right barometer and the right water temperature. And uh, I mean, they're an ambush predator, they're a sight predator. Oh. I mean, this, <laughs> hey. this, this guy here is our fishing barometer. Oh. This guy here is our fishing barometer, so. <laughs> see that? No, you can feel that through the glass. That's when, incredible. When, when he's active, yeah. we, we go fishing. Look at that. When the Murray-Darling Basin was settled in the 1830s, the rivers and streams were bursting with Murray Cod. Hundreds of tonnes of Murray Cod were taken every year by commercial and recreational fishermen. Often, dozens of big cod were taken in just a day. Catches of just a handful of fish this big now take a highly skilled angler a lifetime to achieve. Old timers talk of how much clearer most rivers were and how you could see big cod free swimming in the water. People today would have trouble imagining how common Murray Cod were then and how different our rivers were. Flowing through uncleared upland forests and lowland open woodlands with almost no erosion and no dreaded carp. While commercial overfishing was the main cause of the early decline of this species, in the last 60 years or so, things like snag removal for boat passage, habitat degradation, pollution and dams that block migration and release unnaturally cold water have all added to the decline of the Murray Cod. There's some great work being done on this front, and while there's a lot more work to be done, Blackwater has sprung up in the meantime as yet another big obstacle for man and fish alike. Blackwater is a phenomenon that can affect lowland rivers when red gum leaf litter is flooded during the hotter months. So what is black water? Well, this looks quite nice out there, doesn't it? Looks fishable. But uh, I've taken this sample here, and let me tell you, it stinks. It's got like a garbage smell to it. Now, black water is effectively when leaf litter 
or other rotting vegetation in shallow backwaters and marshes and lagoons like this starts to decompose. It sucks the oxygen out of the water. And when it sucks enough oxygen out that fish and crustaceans like yabbies and shrimp can't breathe anymore, it's called hypoxic. It's more common in lowland areas like this and it's worse when it's hot. So summer months, late spring, early autumn. Now when this water has to enter back into the main river channel, it's got no oxygen in it and if there's enough of it, it kills the fish, they can't breathe anymore. Now it happens naturally, but a lot of people believe, or most of the people I've spoken to at least, believe that man has increased the frequency, the severity and also the duration of blackwater events, which is no good for the fish when this water flows back into the main river channel. Where you have your major problem with black water, when there is existing water left in the floodplain, yeah. and then you get that flood on top. Hypoxic water gets got to go somewhere. It's got to go somewhere, so it's washed straight back into the river. So what was the effect of this big uh, blackwater event in the 2010 flood? What we could understand, there was mostly cod that perished in the 2010 yep. uh, flood event. Now there's, there's plenty of evidence of people driving down the river and seeing 27, 30 huge cod washed up against the snag. Uh, like 50 year old fish? Oh mate, could have been 100 years old. In saying that, like the shrimps and the abbeys and the Murray Crays, we're all crawling out of the river as well because of the black water. No oxygen. No oxygen. What have we got here, Jock? We've got a man-made channel yep. and a regulator which feeds the artificial flood, what they designate as the low bidgy yep. flood scheme. Okay. Now, in that flood scheme, it runs for about 70 kilometres and about 26 kilometres wide, and it is operated from three regulators on the western side of the Murrumbidgee and three on the eastern side of the Murrumbidgee. Yep. We're standing almost in the middle of the artificial flood, flood plain where we are right now. How is this meant there's more black water? At the moment, I believe that um, the authorities have been flooding or pushing water into Yanga National Park. Then we've got a natural flood on, on top. When they know the flood water's coming, they start draining the the water back into the river system. The black water. The black water. Mm. And of course, that, that, that flood was coming in summer when black water on the floodplains at its worst, at, it's, it's at its most that's hypoxic. Correct. Right, yep. See, in, in most flood events, artificial flood events, they would release the water June, July, yep. and it's dried up middle to late December. Before it gets too hot. Before it gets, well, the water's gone. Yeah, okay. So if you got a flood, it wouldn't worry anyway. Okay. Now. Because we're coming out of drought, everyone says, oh, you know, we've got an abundance of water at the moment, we'll use it. Yeah. But they're using it at the, at the wrong time of the year. Okay. Like even the red gum forest won't, will not survive in permanent water. It's full of loaded with black water. It's all got to go back into the system, and that's where we've had this massive fish kill two years in a row. In my travels, I'm finding the opinions on the cause of the cod suffocating black water can be as complex as the river system itself. So John, if a blackwater event comes through a part of the river, is that the end of that part of the river? No, not at all. Not at all, because the water's, water's still moving, yep. and the fish will still move upstream or downstream, they go both ways. They'll repopulate that area? They'll repopulate that area. It'll come back almost immediately when the black water's gone. John had a point. Cod will travel when needed, and blackwater is natural, and has always happened to some extent, especially in other rivers like the Lower Lachlan. However, some more research revealed that massive blackwater catastrophes killing hundreds of giant cod have never been recorded in the Middle Murray and its mighty southern tributaries, like the Murrumbidgee River, before man regulated the rivers. You've had some fish kills out here, Trevor, yes, in the last have. couple of years? Yes, we've had uh, one back in May last year. Okay, that's, yep. We lost uh, a lot of cod, mostly cod. Um, then uh, yeah, just downstream of here, we, we went into this big lagoon and yeah, we counted 380, anywhere from a foot to three foot long. Had the same thing again with yellow belly. Yep. And the odd, um, the odd bony brim. 
Yep. And uh, catfish have been gone as well. So. Catfish, so mm. the smaller fish that were left in the system are starting to cop it a bit too. That's right, now. yeah. Natural or man-made, Murray cod need to be good travellers to survive hypoxic black water. Just downstream, where the Murrumbidgee joins Australia's largest river, the Murray River, had some great fishing before the black water shut some areas down. Keep his head tilted up if you can, Rob. Projects at the Narandera Fisheries Centre are funded by monies us anglers pay for New South Wales recreational fishing licences. And it is helping the plight of the Murray cod. In the, the hatchery practice um, here at Narandera, we've got to um, rotate the fish every five years, the brood stock, okay. and the brood stock are also sourced from the catchment where um, those fish will be stocked back into. For example, here on the Murrumbidgee, our brood stock are sourced locally, yep. um, and then the progeny from those fish are then put back into the river here. Why do you have to do that? Why can't you just have the same brood stock for the whole state? Um, we use um, different brood stock from each catchment because each catchment is um, essentially different. A lot of the catchments actually terminate in wetlands. It's important that the Murray cod might have been isolated in those catchments for a lot of years. Yep. Like, thousands of years. Wow, so they could be slightly genetically different. Yeah, and adapted to the idiosyncrasies of that particular river system. But can blackwater fish kills be avoided now that man controls most of the flows? The solution is not straightforward. Anthony, we've spoken to a lot of different people and they've got varied opinions on, on blackwater, how much of it is natural, how much it have, has been exacerbated by man. But everyone agrees on one thing, what can be done about it? Yeah, well, look, we, uh, we, as a CMA, we've been listening to our community and, and developing ways through partnerships to, to mitigate blackwater events. Um, they are a natural event, but man exacerbates their effects. Okay. Um, so we're looking at using environmental water to, one, dilute, where possible, dilute blackwater yes. so, that, that, so that you don't end up with fish kills. And um, in worst case scenarios where we don't have enough environmental water to dilute yep. blackwater, we actually try and create refuges. Okay. And that, and basically the fish can survive during the blackwater event in those refuges. We've actually got community members out measuring dissolved oxygen for us, letting us know what's happening locally um, so that we can act quickly and do something about it. While the catastrophic man-made fish kills have set back the recovery of older Murray cod some 20 to 30 years, at least some groups are taking a proactive, hands-on approach to try and help. Hopefully more people now realise that artificially flooding wetlands and creating dense lowland red gum forest needs to be thought about carefully. And if we are to protect the threatened species like Murray cod, especially the large ones, any resulting black water needs to be dealt with well before a flood and well before the hot weather makes the water deadly.